Yes, you know where we are. Back chat. We are in Melbourne. Now, it's taken us a little while, but we've finally got a backman in the house, and I'm very excited about it. Not just yet, Nathan. Don't get too excited. Back chat, <laughs> double underscore. Uh, you know where to find us on socials. Backchatpodcast.com.au is where you find all of our gear. You can send us an email at hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. Thanks to our supporters, our sponsors, Shelter, Whippersnapper, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, and of course, Leadable Cameras, all local West Australian brands there, Brody. I know you'll be happy with that. We have a West Australian local, Backman in the house, Nathan Broad. Hi, mate. Hi, mate. Nathan. Good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, excited here at Back Chat. We made, we made, hopefully you feel at home here. We've got the Richmond scarf Good. for you. West Blue, Australian Blue boy. Bet is one of the sponsors too, I heard. Yes. Through Tommy Sheridan, maybe? No, no, no. just all sorted by here. They're very big fans of Back Chat, yeah, actually. Right. He's Nathan. a good man, the owner of that. Yeah. Oh, uh, Met him a few times through Tommy. They've actually, we've been trying to clean them out most of the year. Mm. We've got a couple of multis up, not too many have gone over the line. Now, let's get into it. Greatest sporting achievement. We do this with all of our guests. Now, we know you're a three-time premiership player. We know you've, you've, you've played 100 games for the footy club. A big-time player. A backman. He's kicked one goal in his career. We know all of that. We know what you've done on your football field. We want to know your greatest sporting achievement not on the football field. You play football for a living. Like you're an elite yeah. athlete. We, we care, but we don't really care. We want to know what you've done away from the footy field. What's your greatest sporting achievement? Oh, I haven't played much sport, to be honest, apart from cricket and a um, bit of motorcycle when I was younger. But Tell us about motorcycle. your cricket. What, what sort of cricketer was you? As, you sure you won a flag, to, made a century? Uh, no, no centuries. Open the batting, but no centuries. So you're not um, a bowler. Keeper. Yeah, keeper. Keeper, yeah. So... I didn't get it down bowling. Um, geez, but not much. We, we had a premiership there um, in maybe under 17s. Yes. Um, which was not bad, but geez, there hasn't been much sporting um, highlights really, to be honest. What are you doing on a motorbike? On motorbikes, yeah, that's where I started was on a farm boy. So out in the country, just racing motorcycles till I was about oh, maybe 10, 10 or 11 or so. Any um, medals up, 10 yeah, or 11, sure. any medals or trophies up on the wall? Sure, uh, we never had a motorbike we, story. We had like a halftime Krusty Demons show at Burswood Dome back in the day. There it is. That's and, awesome, uh, absolutely. They had a, um, uh, like a tabletop with shipping container and we were all rocking Pee Wee 50s yeah. and um, get to like almost the top and everyone starts rolling backwards. The bikes weren't <laughs> powerful enough to get up. And <laughs> so at the bottom of this tabletop, just carnage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they didn't plan that one they too well. They up for him. Yeah, Krusty yeah. Demons come down with your bikes, boys, and then, you yeah. couldn't get up the ramp. A little halftime show. <laughs> would have been a good laugh for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Okay, take I'll that. take that. I'll take yeah. that on board. You, you, if you were racing, you would have won some. No, nah, I don't think I won any. Nah, oh, nah. Come on, been doing dirt drags. I won a dirt drag. What's yeah, a dirt drag? Was, um, been doing dirt drags was run by um, oh, one of the motorcycle gangs out there that I used to do. Um, so you just dip down a straight 1v1. Um, yeah, they had on everything. the dirt? Yeah, on dirt. Yep, yep. So That's good. Yeah, that was good. It used to be called Bindoon Rock. Um, back in the day, which is a big festival out there, but they oh. banned the Bindu and Rock and just kept the dirt drags. I I just have instant reflections of Vin Diesel and Too Fast, Too Furious. Like <laughs> you never had your car, yeah, it's that but, vibe. It's, but it's like in the desert and there's yeah. just <laughs> cars spinning and dust everywhere, and the boys come out of the bikes. Is that how slips. it goes, basically? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pink slips, <laughs> racing for bikes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. We'll take that. I think. Now, um, look, look, we. <sighs> We do use Wikipedia just for a bit of a bit of a look over it, but we like to think that we do more research than that. But I've had a look at your Wikipedia page. It says you're from Woburn. <laughs> I don't reckon you are. Are you from Woburn? No, I'm not from Woburn. So um, I'm from Dongra, which is up at the coast of Western Australia. Um, Jamie Cripps from Dongra? Who's uh, in Dongra? Jager O'Meara's Dongra. That's Cripps right. is um, Savannah's, I think. Too, yep. Yeah, so um, the old man just moved to Woburn, which is a town of 11. Um, <laughs> had this little business opportunity um, pop up so he moved there in probably 2016 and then um, obviously Wikipedia chucked it up that I was from Woburn and then premiership in 2017 so I've got everyone doing these articles and saying this this bloke from Woburn the town's only got 11 people they didn't know what it hit it um, but, <laughs> put it on the map yeah, yeah put it on the map it's got a pub a service station in my dad's business so um, there's not much going on there but um, yeah I'm from Dongra what about Woburn. what about uh, the, the town of Dongra then because Dongra's a bit bigger it's not it's more than 11 people and there's Done a couple of nice little uh, sportsman's nights at Dongra, actually. It's a very yeah, good yeah. community feel, love their sport. What do the people of Dongra think when they see the boy from the kid out of <laughs> Woburn? I don't know if they even know where Woburn is, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, Dongra's where it's at. It's a good little place, yeah, right on the coast. So who do you play for in Dongra uh, growing up as a footy player? What's the? No, nah, I didn't play for Dongra. No, nah, I nah. wasn't. Uh, I moved by then back a bit closer to Perth, yeah. So who did you play for as a junior? 
Uh, Upper Swan. Upper yep. Swan. Yeah. Yep. What are they? So, Upper Swan what? The Swans, yeah. Yeah. The Upper so, Swan Swans. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> You're lying. No, I actually don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. Surely that Upper makes sense. Swan. The swans. Uh, yeah, what, I reckon they were. What, yeah, they, yeah. What, what did you wear? Like, what yeah, was we had like the swan on the V. Yeah, so, so, so it'd swans. be the upper swan swans on day. <laughs> no, that's off. Charlie, please confirm that upper. S- <laughs> Does he? I could be wrong. Yeah. Upper swan swans. Yeah. That is <laughs> beautiful. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, what are we gonna? What? Oh, that's very good. Oh, the yellow with the the black swan. Yeah, oh, the yeah, black, the black duck. swan. Yeah, yeah. Could have been up. the ducks. Yeah, the upper yeah. swan ducks. <laughs> well, how good's that upper swan? What are we gonna call this upper swan? Upper swan. Ah, swans, swans, I suppose. Swans yeah, good. Very good. So what's what's it like growing up in the broad household? Are you a sporting family? Um, no, nah, no sporting at all. No, nah, only child. Um, old man's just a farmer um, and then got into real estate and stuff like that. And mum definitely doesn't have a sporting bone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> She's hopeless. Um, so I don't know yeah, where the sporting came from, but um, only child too, so no siblings there. So is that uh, a reason that you don't get picked up as a 17-year-old? We see all these stories, you know, the pathway through the Colts and then um, into draft camp and then everyone gets picked up and away you go. Is that a bit about it, your upbringing? Is it something that you don't take too seriously growing up? Or? Um, no, I loved footy. I started probably like when I was 12. So yeah. um, I had enough opportunity to be good enough to go, but um, I wasn't amazing. I was just a lockdown defender at 18 and um, my lifestyle choices and what I wanted to do in my free time was uh, probably not up to AFL level. So um, yeah, it deterred a few clubs and stuff. So. Once I grew up a little bit, um, I was all right. Right next to the R and, uh, Ryan Davis stool, uh, the back right-hand corner of Hippie Club is the Nathan Broad Memorial statue. <laughs> <laughs> had my engagement party there the other week. It uh, went down like a lead balloon for the West Coast boys. But <laughs> So, okay, we're going to touch on it at the end, but let's get right into that. Uh, so you go to Hippie Club for your engagement party, which I've got to fucking say is the most perfect thing I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. How bloody good. How, I mean, how did... How do you get that across the line with the missus? Uh, well, she's from Perth as well. We're both from Perth. Um, right. There's a good photo of us. She's got a, like a choker necklace and um, I've got my arm in a sling. It's crook as. Um, <laughs> back when we were young whippersnippers at Hippie Club. So we just thought, why not wind the clock back? Um, had no idea if it was still a thing or if it's still pumped. And um, I reckon we rolled in the door at about 9.30 and we were the first Early. people there. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> shit, we fucked up here. <laughs> it's not a thing anymore. And I had a few boys stay back after we played West Coast. So they were just looking around going, fuck fucking hell this is a this is dive it's no grim good. yeah very grim and then um hour later it was heaven well yeah. we so we all saw the photos of your yeah, engagement party because they were in the paper with the west coast <laughs> boys front and center i gotta ask so look the way i read it from externally i obviously know you know got a lot of contacts at west coast none at richmond from the west coast side of things you know they, they you know were trying to do the right thing by the pandemic and whatever i don't, I don't really want to talk about that but they were effectively told not to go from the Richmond side of things, it was, you know, an engagement party. So I assume everyone knew at Richmond that you guys were going down to the hippie club. Yeah, yeah. Well, we obviously played West Coast yeah. and then um, we had an eight or nine day break. So um, we spoke to the club saying, oh, I'm going to have my engagement party. Do you mind if like boys stay back and they're like, go for it. Unreal connection piece. Um, you know, we haven't been able to connect with COVID. Um, amazing. We love it. So, yeah, I think we had about six or seven boys stay back. And, um, yeah, it was pretty funny when, when it all went down with media calling Richmond, like, trying to get us in trouble. And Richmond, like, it's fine. Like, go, yeah, leave us alone. Yeah, so. So do you have to go – did you ask about hippie clubs specifically or did you did you just say we're going to have an engagement party and then – No, like I said, club? we're going like this hippie club bar thing and all that. <laughs> no, like, and, um, sounds good. Yeah, went to Mandoon Winery before that. Um, yeah, had a few beers out there, got a party bus in. And, um, yeah, it was <laughs> – it was all happening. It was all go. If any West Coast, uh, I know a few West Coast boys do listen to this show. They will be just sitting there, just shaking their heads. You got the winery to a, into a party bus, into the best night of your life at Hippie Club. They've just come down for a couple of quiet beers down at the Hippie Club and been turned into one of the all time shit shows we've seen on the West Coast. Uh, if we sort of like expand it out more as Richmond Footy Club, I actually, um, I know you don't give a shit, but I wrote an article on the whole thing and saying that it was interesting how both clubs handled it. And, you know, given you guys have got the tick off, I think it was different. But I use the example in the hub. Um, mm. If you remember, a couple of lads of yours got in trouble. They were out. They got in a fight. Um, they got sent home. Um, it looked from afar, Richmond, um, you're a caring footy club. Like, yeah, is that would that be fair to say? You look after the, you know, you love your players, love each other, and. Yes, you can make mistakes and learn from it, but above all, yeah, look yeah. after each other. Well, yeah, it's good. They just, they just treat us like adults, which is what we are. Mm. Um, and then, like, there's rules there, but no, like, concrete rules. So um, we don't have, like, drinking bans and all that stuff. Obviously, it's just you don't drink on a six-day break, but 
even a beer after the game on a six day break we still do that together we have one or two beers and then you know we head home um stuff like that and players respect that so they don't want to go outside the rules because we have it so good yeah um and then if you do go outside the rules which a couple of boys did in the hub yeah like there's punishments there but you cop your punishment but the club still wraps their arms around you and that's what they did like both boys stayed at richmond um their contracts were never in jeopardy or anything they just learned and then they grew from it um everyone makes mistakes mm. but um no i think the balance that richmond has is yeah really good you just treat like an adult when we treat the rules with respect um it goes both ways i think yeah and it's bred success which is probably the most important thing yeah well that's what we've figured out in our time like on paper we might not have the best team sometimes but i think it's the clubs that can connect the best yeah Mm. Well, especially during COVID, hundred percent. It's funny you say treat like adults because from from the outside looking in, it looked like the Eagles treated the players sort of like they're like telling off their kids a mm. bit. So yeah. it was a different approach to that whole yeah, club. I think some clubs can. Maybe, I'm not saying Eagles did, but some clubs can really throw their players under the bus um, and and all that stuff. But I think what Richmond does really well is you know they from the inside we might deal with them, but we don't put that on the outside. You know, we don't hang them out to dry kind of thing. Not saying West Coast, that's what they yeah. did. But um, yeah, that's what, what, what Richmond's good is at. That, is, that how, is that player driven? Like, is it like sort of, you know, culture that's set from the from the top, but then the is it player driven in, through your leadership group and then yeah. guys underneath that? Yeah, well, we've met up with our Melbourne Storm's leadership group and discussed them because, you know, they, they had a fair bit of off-field drama go on and yep. um, we just bounced back ideas back and forth and they said that almost no, nothing ever makes it to the coach, like ever. It always just gets to the leadership group and the captain and it's resolved um, there. So we thought that was amazing and that's what we try and implement, um, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Koch uh, has been captain, uh, Nan Curvis now captain. Who, yep. Who's the leadership group over this last, you know, five, six, seven years of success? Um, well, we had, yeah, Kochi, Rewalt, um, Grimes, yep. Edwards. Um, was Rance in the leadership group before he stepped away? Yeah, he was yep. there. He was there as well, yep. Um, Asprey. Yep. Um, a lot, then, of, a lot of backmen mm. in there, I tell you what. Yeah, yeah. Well, you need the backs. Yeah, Correct. they're good. And then we've had a few go. Now we've got co-captains. Um, so we've got like Grimesy, Nank, Baker. Um, Koch just kind of floats in and out. Yep. Um, and Marlon Pickett's in there. Um, and a couple other boys. Yeah, then we have like a subgroup below that. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's good. I think how it's does, a structure as well. How does that work from a player's perspective having co-captains? Is there like one that you go to more or like... You know, is certain personalities are, are treated differently by the different captains? Yeah, I think it works really well. Like, they, they do it 50-50, like, coin toss, speeches, all that stuff. Yeah, like, no one ever is taking, like, more leadership than the other. Um, and they play to their strengths, too. Like, Toby's not a massive talker um, and all that stuff. But out on the field, he's just an absolute brute. Um, so, yeah, so they yeah they play to their strengths really well. But I'm, I'm loving the co-captaincy. Like, Kochi was amazing, but... Um, yeah, the co-captaincy is working really well. Um, who has the best record flipping the coin then if they're doing 50-50, do you know? Oh, I don't keep my eye on it too much, but the last couple, Nanks won. Uh, we don't win them very often. Really? No, we're, we're shocking. We're shit at the old coin flip. <laughs> We'd be no good at two up. S- someone, someone needs to do, do some stats if you win the cost. Swamp's got it, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, you can write that down. Get it to Swamp. Uh, if you win the toss, do you win the game? That, now that <laughs> bit of vision to watch through there. Um, so you, you drafted, you, know, you come out of Swan Districts, play some footy there. Uh, you get drafted as a mature age recruit, pick 67. Mm, third uh, last. Yeah, the, yeah. Were you? Yeah, third last. 2015 yeah. draft. Yep. Um, does that mean anything to you? Are you just happy to get on a list? What, what do you... Did, you, yeah, did yeah. you think you were going to get picked up? No, nah, not at all. No, nah, no. Nah. I thought rookie at best. Um, right. And then I've, my parents are divorced, so we just met at the casino in Perth <laughs> <laughs> and just watched the draft, but like no no intentions. And then um, I remember someone around, oh, men and Gola went to pick before me. Um, so like we were walking out, leaving, and I just like stopped and I was like, oh, well done, fucking oath. Um, men and Gola just got drafted. And then we we're walking out and my name got called. And just like looked back and just like could not believe it and yeah had had no clue Richmond would have picked me up um, yeah I met him like for five ten minutes quickly when I got back from Bali <laughs> and got stuck in Bali because of the volcano <laughs> oh right <laughs> in my draft year yeah, yeah so I was stuck there too yeah it was I, a I got married in Hawaii and went to Bali for the honeymoon I got stuck yeah uh, yeah that was 2015 yeah, wasn't yeah, it? yeah yeah so I was stuck there for about three weeks trying trying to get back ready for the draft <laughs> were you trying to get back yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry oh, shame. I'm stuck um, what, at what pick 
did you have in your mind that you were going to leave? Like, if you're like, oh, I'm not picked by this certain time. Because you, I mean, you were about to leave one pick before it. Like, did you yeah. keep going, oh, one more? Like, oh, oh. oh, to be honest, I thought I was no chance in the national. My parents just wanted to do it. Um, they wanted me to go. So we just kind of went with my parents, no, no friends or anything really. And then, um, yeah, there was no intentions. Rookie at best. Like, a couple of clubs said, like, we're probably going to try and take you in the rookie. Um, but that was it. Like, Richmond didn't even... Didn't even say that. Was it on a Saturday? Did you head to Hippie Club after you got picked up? Uh, I can't remember what it did. No, nah, they had me on the next flight, I think. Yeah, uh, it was pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, so only Hippie till two then. <laughs> 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 oh, that's very good. So 2016, your first year. Don't play too much in the first part, but your debut in 2016. Yeah. Um, were you late call up? Were you yeah. at MC and came? So did, you, did your family get to be there? No, nah, I was having brekkie um, out out with um, a few of the VFL boys who were playing VFL and um, Dimmer called me. He's like, don't panic. Um, you're probably going to be late to the warm-up or whatever. Um, Jake Batchelor's pulled out um, with a sore back and we want you to come play because um, I was like an emergency, but we only take one one to the ground or whatever and I wasn't one of them. And it was, so it was like a back for back. So I was like, oh, sh- fucking hell, shit. So, so what time? So, so yeah. you're playing at a two? Uh, yeah, it was two. like a two o'clock game at the um, Eddie Had Marvel. Oh, no, sorry, at the G day and game. And this is Brisbane. like 11 o'clock, Dimmer rings you? Yeah, yeah, like probably. I probably got there maybe half an hour after the other boys would have got there maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was pretty, but it was probably the best way to do it, to be honest. I didn't have time to think about it. Um, it was unfortunate my family couldn't be there, but yeah, yeah I didn't have time to really think about it. Just rolled in and straight out and off we went. Did you have to go yeah. home, get your boots? No, nah, because I was getting ready and all that stuff because VFL was playing or something was happened so um, I think I just shot into the club and got my stuff and then literally walked straight across so it was pretty easy unreal yeah. how nah. good was that for a first game just yeah like, oh, I'll just play AFL then I suppose <laughs> just roll in <laughs> how'd you go do you remember Went okay it? it wasn't too bad yeah like it's just nothing amazing but yeah held my spot for the following week and then got the ass what's he like as a coach Damien Hardwick good yeah changed a lot like um he's even said it in the media like he was pretty hard and all this stuff early days and he went to this um leadership thing in america or whatever and so that the sort um, of at the end of 2016 so yeah yeah i think a few people year. have done it, like Stuart Hughes done it um a couple others and yeah it really changed him he came back a different like completely different person really um yeah How? yeah How? just like more like um opening himself like vulnerable yeah like himself um and then yeah he would tell stories and stuff and open up to players and a bit more caring and stuff as well he thought Originally he had to be, you know, this hard coach and all this stuff, but realised that that wasn't the way. And hmm. um, a lot changed um, from 2016 to 2017. Like a lot changed well, around the club. 2016, you know, there, you know, the media comes knocking, which is ridiculous. But mm. uh, for his job, yeah, you know, he almost lost his his job as the coach, mm. and he goes on to be a three time premiership coach, potentially more. Um, you know, given that you've been along for that journey, like does that. Um, uh, I don't know how do, you, how, do you, how do you sort of reflect on that given that he's been able to coach the group to yeah yeah so when you like when shit's going real bad like it's so hard to you know want to have fun and take the piss because you're losing so much yeah. so it's hard to get yourself out of that rut yes. and we had like fuck it sounds outrageous now but we had like can't use the lift so sign on the lift you're not allowed to use the lift take the stairs um, do 20 minutes of touch before you can play table tennis and like all these like things to, to do before you could like have fun Yes. And um, we just went like he went on this course and then the whole club just went, fuck it, we're having fun. Like, let's enjoy it. Let's train hard, have fun and enjoy each other's company. Um, and we just became this like one big club. We had no segregate groups. Like there wasn't, you know, some blokes doing this, some blokes doing that. We just became like one club um, and enjoyed it and had fun. And um, yeah, it's just been the turning point, I reckon. It seems like a hard thing to do, like click, yeah, your, click your fingers and do that. Oh, it's so hard. Like, and you can't like some of these teams that are on the bottom now, like you can't just tell them like, Oh, go and have fun because <laughs> yeah. you know, like it's not that easy, and like it, it might look shocking too because like you, you're losing. So sometimes you think we need to work harder, but like sometimes is working harder actually going to benefit you? Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. Like, it, I, was, sorry, was that something that was like announced when you know the start of the season? Like guys were, were changing everything, or was it yeah. just sort of like slowly like you nah, realized we, we it changed was it. it started with Dimmer and Koch. They um got up and really opened up vulnerability. Um, we got some new people in, in that mind space and in, in that area. Um, and then, yeah, c- people just started getting more vulnerable and um, all this stuff and sharing stories. And then we did a few um, things we've done like Triple H, which is Hardship, um, Hero and Highlight. So we did that through the preseason, um, which was, yeah, amazing. Like people really opened up and that's, yeah, things that we keep close to our chest now. But, um, yeah, things like that just really made us know people on a deeper level. And then there's that extra care there for them then. People yeah. in the media and externally, um, I think around that time, saw Jack Higgins 
uh, in in the middle of the group. It might have been nineteen. <laughs> you know, um, told it clearly told a joke. Yeah, and, and all you boys are standing around pissing yourselves laughing. Yeah. as a player, I kind of I could see what happened. It was it was the enjoyment factor, but a lot of people. Yeah, you know, are they taking it serious enough? Yeah, are they, they ready to play? Are yeah, and all this stuff. Yeah, and that's yeah. what that is, right? Yeah, hundred like, percent. Like it's a stressful game as it is, and you had a crowd in there and selection and all this stuff. It's a pretty stressful game. Mm. Um, so yeah, we train flat out. The boys train so hard, but then sometimes you need laughter or break the ice, and that's what yeah, Higo was doing back then. Twelfth game playing a premiership. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking it's not that hard, is it, <laughs> boys? Twelfth yeah, game. It's it was madness. Yeah, I was injured for the first ten. Did my shoulder. Uh, week before round one and then yeah AC AC yeah yep. yep. and then played a few VFL and just um, came in like just basher back end someone and gets four week suspension and basher's never been suspended in his life so yeah just the right time right place um, freak situation with basher and then they trialed a few blokes and then um, I was the third bloke to get trialed and it just it just worked so yeah. did basher play in the premiership in 2017 yeah he came, came back, back. Um, I think we went with like a four four keys three smalls or the other way around or something and then, and then we changed to the you know, opposite way four and three or whatever it was i can't remember it was yeah four you, keys and then i went i cut clan it as a um hybrid you're yeah, yeah. you're you're in the middle right you can yeah. play tall small yeah so yeah. i think um one of our smalls went out unfortunately yeah um, um so that game there that's the power stance from adelaide yeah the grand final um the Whatever that thing is, what did, did you boys? Did you boys know about that? Like, I mean, it was, it was in the media a lot. Did you speak yeah. about that? Was that a thing? Oh, or was it we bored? had a bit of a giggle when it was out there, like watching them standing across from and seeing it. It looked pretty funny a bit. Like I didn't know what was going on. If you were going for an enjoyment level, like yeah. instead of you know the you know face off, yeah. you boys would have been standing there having <laughs> yeah. a laugh. Yeah, well, you look at our team photo and everyone's got a smile. Um, Dimmer Dim brought that up. Um, I think after the granny, if you just look at the team photo, of 2017 pregame. Everyone's got a massive smile on their face and happy as, and yeah, huh. it was yeah pretty funny to look across and see it. <laughs> um, so you win that flag, uh, you're a premier, twelve games in. Um, is there is there anything that changes for you, like a uh, dear, or are you just too young to you personally yeah, realize yeah. what's going on? In, you know, just young in the game, like, it was just a blur. Yeah, like too young to realize what had happened. Um, even like now. With fortune to have three, it still doesn't feel like oh, like I'm a three time premiership player. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. The group doesn't change. Everything stays the same, and um, the coaches stay the same. It's just yeah, pretty normal to be honest. But I think when the career's over, it'll be something that we'll look back on. When you um sat down, you uh, there's a footy here on set. <laughs> if anyone is watching along, you can see. If you're listening, you've got a. It's actually Tom Barass's footy. It's got Barass written Name on it. here. We used to get. No, we used to be able to take one footy away and you had to bring it back and that's why his name's on it. But it's got the gold logo. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that was a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know for a while. I don't think I even knew after 17 and then I noticed it on all our training balls um, on our jerseys for that season, the season after. So you get the gold AFL logo, yeah. you get it on your jumper and you get it on your footies. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, is that nah. have you just been rolling gold merch for <laughs> half gold. a decade at Richmond? <laughs> now we can't even get a ball sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> we had these shock and balls for a bit, and now I think we've taken the AFL's Maccas. <laughs> They're off the Richmond bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, they jumped off quickly. Um, so 2017 happens. 2018, um, it's an interesting year. Uh, Alex Rance does his ACL in 2018. 2019. 2019, 2019. sorry. Yeah. 2018, 2018. I've gone too far ahead. 2018, you're the best side in the competition, mm. and you won the there's a uh, award every year that goes to the best side in the competition, McClellan the Trophy. Yeah, 2018 Richmond recipients of that. Um, so you've had a good year. You personally had a good year, but um, every year I will touch on this a little bit. Every year you've been in and out of the team. You haven't yeah. been a never never played every game. No, you no, haven't. No. But 2018, um, you're the best side. Come into a prelim. Just sat down with Mason Cox, so he. Had a bit to say about that game, <laughs> and you don't rock up. Yeah, yeah. right. Is, is that is that fair to say? Pretty much. Yeah, we did, we could not stop him. Like we we threw everything at him. Like we changed structures, positions, put two people on big coxie. Yeah. Um, we just could not stop him. It was just yeah. I, I don't think if we had two extra players out there that day, yeah. we would have honestly won. Um, they were just unbelievable on the day. Um, we we were off. But still, I think yeah, they just played unbelievable. We're outclassed big time. I know, um, I know you've got he's got his media training on now. I can see it in his eyes because he's a current <laughs> player, Richmond. I'll tell you what happened. So we win that grand final, right? So the grand final week to prepare for Collingwood, you watch. You usually see how the teams played the week before. 
Um, never told this story before and I only thought of it just it's as good. Nathan's coming in. We watched the first 15 minutes, minute to minute, not yeah. unclipped, um, of Richmond. Yeah. Don't watch Collingwood. Yeah. So the instruction was do not watch Collingwood. Just watch Richmond players. Watch your line. Watch how they play. First 15 minutes of that game. And Simo just put the vision on. Yeah. It's never happened before in my career. Never happened again. And we just sat in a room and watched it. This yeah, is Monday right. before the grand final. Yeah, yeah, how good. And then he, he turned the lights back on and, and he's like, what, what did you learn? And the you know, boys are throwing out, oh, you know, Collingwood, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And pretty much the point was, and I don't know if you're going to lie hearing this, but yeah, yeah. pretty much was don't do what Richmond just did. Yeah, yeah. So first 10 minutes, Collingwood jumped you. Um, your mids weren't working hard. So yeah. out of the stoppage, Collingwood were just absolutely piss bolting out. And yeah. the Richmond boys were just, just looking a bit sluggish, which meant the backs got exposed. You know, Coxie starts lighting up later in the game. But we actually watched Richmond and it was... if We'd, we'd lost the 2015 grand final three years before and we hadn't rocked up. So yeah, yeah. it's something that happens in footy games, but it was pretty much whatever happens, if we lose, great. But make sure you rock up and, and, and play. So... I don't know. Yeah. I'll share that. But we um, there's a big thing in peaking early. Dimmer reckons like if you peak early in season, yeah. he's like it's it's not what you want. And he's always said let's play our best footy late. And every year at the buy like 17 or 13th, yeah. 19 we were 11th. Yeah. This year we were oh, sorry 20 we were like 11th or something. And this year we were uh, 10th. Yes. Yeah, Whereas so 18 you were top of the ladder probably. I yeah, don't know. we won 15 in a row I think or 14 in a row. Flying. Um, yeah, just flying and. Does that yeah. does that game, um, you know, given people think you're the best side, um, clearly I don't think so because the grand final winner is the best <laughs> side in my mind. But does that does that motivate you for for the the the, the group, uh, just the loss, or is it money just not move? really? No, nah. yeah, it's just one. You just you just move on, kind of. You rock mm. up pre season and, and you go again and get around the boys and um, yeah, it wasn't spoken about day one of pre season or anything. Um, it was just yeah, dwelling on how good of a season it was. Um, we did a lot right. Um, let's just go again. Where did you watch the grand final? Did you watch the 18 grand final? Yeah, yeah. I was with um, a couple of mates and um, Toby Green, actually, funny enough, and we got absolutely spastic. We were so <laughs> blind. <laughs> and um, we were, like, joking, we'll, we'll be in it next year. And we played GWS. Wow. Yeah, it was bizarre. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so that um, no, was pretty funny. We were legless that day. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, yeah. pretty much any game you don't play in the grand final, that usually is the case for most AFL yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, but it was funny enough the following year. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, sorry yeah. Um, so uh, we touched on before, almost you're a three-time premiership player, but I don't know if you're not first pick, but you've been, you've been dropped. You've come, you know, selection adversity. You've been injured. You never played every game in a season. Yeah, like, yeah. Is that a thing you're aware of? And like, do you is there elements of that that you use yourself to get yourself up and get back in the team or go yeah, through a yeah. rehab? Every yeah, every year it's found myself dropped. Uh, except for last year, I got injured and missed the rest of the season. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's something that motivated me every time um, just to go back. But I was always in bad form when I got dropped. Like it wasn't something that was a bit of a shock to the system. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was good. Just went back and made my way back in in 2020 it was very lucky they lost the first final if they win that first final the team probably doesn't change um so yeah a lot of things have gone my way luck wise which is very good and very very lucky do you you know getting dropped do you think the coaches know that you're that sort of player though that actually getting dropped might might actually help you yeah i think it helps a lot of players yeah mm -hmm. i reckon um you can like play seven eight nine games you know just kind of floating through getting a game and you know like deep down I'm just kind of floating along at the moment. Yeah. And I reckon getting dropped is, is so good because you can save five, six games. All you need is one or two games in the VFL or Waffle. Yeah. Get that form back and then you can come back in. Um, so you can you can save five or six mediocre games, I reckon, by doing that. So you win, win 17, lose 18. Rancy does his ACL early um, in 19. Yeah. Um, which you're sort of that hybrid player. You, you can play small, but you can play tall. Does him coming out of the team mean that you got to start playing taller around yeah. Grimes and yep. those sorts of players? Yeah, because we had Asprey, Grimes and myself um, at that stage. So I played taller um, and then played taller in 2020 at the start of that as well. Because um, he then, retires, Rance retires. At yeah, the Rance retired yeah. Um, after 2019. Yeah. So he went out and then we had to find someone else again. So Bolter came in as a back. Yep. Um, so then we had Asprey, myself and Grimes uh, and Bolter. But Bolter was a bit of a swing man, so... 
yeah, it was a bit tall, small, tall, small, but I'd definitely rather small. You see my group that kind of is motivated by, you know, not proving people wrong, but, you know, so Rance goes out, does his ACL. It's like, right, Richmond can't, Richmond can't win the grand final. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's the start of the year and Richmond can't win and it'd be all over the media. Can't win without Rance, yeah. all Australian, blah, blah, blah. Internally, is it just like, you know, he lost a good player and a good mate, but it's also next soldier up. Yeah, I think it's Jim. The way we get coached is, is always good like that. But we play a system too, so yeah. some teams are one on one, like Sydney and that. But we're we're system based, so you kind of never have the same matchup very much at all. So yeah. I think that helps us. Um, if a play goes down, you can fill the gaps. But I reckon if we're one on one, it would hurt us a lot. I reckon. So 2019, okay, ends in a premiership, but something else pretty special happened that year. Um, first and only goal in your career, 2019, round <laughs> eight. Frio, Optus Stadium. Um, 38th game that was. One goal. You only kicked one goal yeah, in your career. I was playing what, second ruck. What were you doing? You, I've seen it. You were, yeah. you were, you were the deepest forward. So yeah, you were second second ruck. ruck, resting ruck. <laughs> <laughs> 192 resting ruck. Because <laughs> the vision is, is Frio's got the ball up to stadium, trying to get it in their forward line and um, in scr- scrimmages around and it's a quick transfer of play. The ball goes up, the camera flashes and you're the deepest man. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was um, the few plays before that I was in the centre bounce and I managed to get one against Lowell and um, the next one I was you know pretty confident the next one he's jumped early and almost ended my career put one right in my throat <laughs> I remember going to the bench and Dim's on the phone he's like don't you fucking jump and he's just going off his head um, so then I went went straight forward the next one and then was yeah lucky enough to get it um, you could have hand passed it as well did you know you hadn't kicked a goal and you're 30 out straight in front you yeah wanted I had all, the, all my mates there and they up in the crowd so I thought oh why True. not yeah but I, I don't want another goal now um, yeah, had, a, had a chance the other week to have one from 50 and lower the eyes I reckon if you end your career on five or six <laughs> yeah, no it's not cares. as good as one you yeah. know so I want to Tom, finish it on one Tom Barras is in the same area as I reckon took him a long time to kick his first goal so over he's on him. one yeah so he, yeah. in his hundredth game yep as seen here on back chat we caught we caught it we said, we said imagine the scenes if Tom Barras kicks one in his hundredth lo and behold gets takes a mark um, on the wing 50 meter penalty takes him to the man of the mark 45 meters out and he dobbed it, like dobbed on his left and got a standing ovation the entire <laughs> way down the field. It's like, you cannot kick another goal after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You got to come. I need one closer than 45. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got a big leg on you. Oh, no, no. Um, so 2019, you win. Is that redemption? Is it, or is it a get like, yeah, I'm learning, I'm learning chatting to you. It seems like you sort of, you and the team maybe are just like, okay, that's what we're here to do. Or is it yeah, a it's a bit game? like that. No, no, it's just a bit like kind of, that's what we're here to do. Um, I think the way Dimmer speaks to us and the structure behind the way he talks um, really keeps us at a level head. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of like, we obviously celebrated and loved every bit of it, but um, it wasn't, didn't feel like a redemption or anything, no. Did you um, post game, have a chat with Toby and say, hey, remember we were watching this <laughs> last <laughs> no, year? I didn't want to, probably not the time. Nah, probably not the time, nah. <laughs> um, what, you know, yeah. that, what, that, that game, I mean, you guys won by a lot. Yeah. Surely, is there a point towards you know, three quarter time, whatever you like, this is in the bag? Like, what at what point do you start celebrating? I know, I know people say, like, no, not till the final siren, but surely yeah. at some point you're like, this is done. I remember it was very late. Like, it was still very late when we realized, oh, we've won this. Um, the boys were just so in the zone. Um, we, sp- we actually spoke about this. Like, when did we think we we're calling it? I remember we we're doing this just like one step at a time thing, just doing this. Um, and that was like, I think we we're still doing that end of the third. Um, so, yeah, it was probably like around the start of the last quarter. That we felt like we'd had it yeah well because you yeah i mean if it was richmond now i probably wouldn't feel comfortable at all with all the leads <laughs> we're giving up <laughs> <laughs> you got that you got our dimmer and the boys there your assistant coaches knowing all about that uh okay 19 win 2020 uh covid global pandemic blah 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 going to hubs um it's a different year than ever has been seen before and haven't spoken to too many guys certainly haven't spoken to anyone who won the premiership that year but that was my last year in the game um uh, I think within playing groups, and you can confirm or deny this, players wanted to win that one the most. Yeah. Some people would think, well, it's a compromised season and Asterix. Like, yeah, seventeen games and there's less game time and being in hubs and the season was shut down, would think, Oh, it's not a big one to win. Did the Richmond Footy Club think that what I was thinking, which is maybe um, the best one at all? When it was in Melbourne still, we felt like a little bit like oh it's like it's just a dead rubber season kind of yeah. when we're still around Melbourne 
and then when the hubs are brought up and the reality we were moving away once we moved away um, and realized we we're there for the season it really became like if you win this one this is the one like this would be the best one we've won um, away from family away from all this stuff um, so once we got set up in the hub and we realized we were there for more than 32 days which we originally told <laughs> yeah correct the <laughs> flpa meeting the big oh, group you'll be right the group meetings you know it won't be away for more than five weeks oh yeah just, seven just, just pack for this long you'll be fine no worries all good um but yeah once we got settled in like we really yeah our, our mindset changed like well, this is the one to win if we can win this this is huge and when you did win it was that the feeling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We couldn't do much, obviously, with COVID restrictions, but we got Fisher into the hub. Oh, was um, and my, that was my next question. Yeah, that Fisher. was wild. Yeah. Fisher, I mean, you know who Fisher is? No. Okay, so if you need to, go back and have a look at my social profile. I do a very good Fisher impersonation. I've got the same hair, a little duck on top, a uh, little <laughs> la la la. All right, so <laughs> Fish. That's a big moment. I'm sorry, three premierships, but Fisher coming and playing, yeah. effectively playing. What was going on? He's just hanging out with the boys. Yeah, he just literally like, I think Dustin knew him or whatever, or Dustin knew the Stafford brothers who were linked to Fisher. Yeah. So the Stafford brothers rocked up and Fisher. Um, and Because the- you were in like the, were you still at the Gabba in like a room? No, nah, we're at our, back at our hub, yes. um, KDV Hotel. So we're back there, but... The rules were we weren't allowed to leave for like 48 hours or 24 hours or something post granny. Yes. You had to wait this little period, but people could come in. It was real weird. Um, <laughs> so you so, just got Fisher in the play. So Dustin's like, screw it. I'm going to get Fisher to come play. And it was in our um, dining area. So the, the <laughs> hotel had moved all the tables out, <laughs> put in like a little DJ set. There was, was a smoke machine in there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was all happening. It was like, <laughs> if you looked from the video at Fisher, you look like you're at a festival. But if you like looked behind the cameraman, there's just like a couple of staff <laughs> few players families like a couple of kids so like there was like probably in total including the people watching and maybe a hundred people <laughs> listening to like this huge fest, uh, fest, uh, Fisher festival yeah it was losing mad. it the song losing it you know you know you know who Fisher is don't I just google it and I have no idea I'm not that guy I don't know uh, could someone play him? Oh, if, he was unreal too. Like he he he, he, like he played for for ten thousand people. Like he, <laughs> he wasn't playing for he wasn't playing for forty people. He was sending it. So it was yeah, it was unreal. That's great. Um, where do you where do you keep your uh, three premiership medals, three premiership jumpers? Yeah, I keep them with the family. The the jumpers I had in the lounge room, um, and then framed, and then you had them framed in the lounge room. Had two of them together, and then. Um, the fiance moved in and yeah, the next day they were gone <laughs> <laughs> under the spare bed. <laughs> now they're in a storage unit. <laughs> so yeah, she won that battle. But um, now one day when, when we build our dream home, we'll get it put somewhere, I reckon, yeah. Um, do you, yeah, that's very good. Do you, um, what was I going to say? Uh, the, yeah, the, the medals are always a, th- a thing. Are they, are they different? Are they the same? They just have different years on them? Uh, I mean, no, they're the same, yeah. Words. Same message on the back, same everything, but um, they're definitely in different condition. <laughs> well, what, are, what, are, what are some people, what would people listening um, who haven't won a flag um, at AFL level, what, is there anything that people wouldn't know? Things that happen post-game, any grand final, any premiership you've won that you can think, People wouldn't know this sort of stuff happens. Like, for instance, Fisher playing in front of <laughs> four, four people would be one of them. Um, What's something that people wouldn't know about winning an AFL premiership? You've done it three times now. Uh, I don't know. We have to do a signing day, like a memorabilia day. That's normally Wednesday, Thursday, post-granny. Yes. Um, and that's an eight-hour, nine-hour job. Oh, you'd know, obviously. Yeah. Um, Nine hours of signing signatures. Yeah, because we hadn't won one in 37 years. Um, the memorabilia <laughs> company like, this is the biggest one we've ever done. And you can imagine the state of the boys four or five days post granny. <laughs> Not well. <laughs> Not well at all. Um, so, yeah, that that's pretty... Um, yeah, it starts off pretty tedious, but it's pretty funny by the end. Did you get to meet the Prime Minister? No, no, I didn't get... Did you... ScoMo came in... Uh, I... I I almost can't remember it because, yeah, again, yeah. four days post. Um, my one and only, so made the most of it. Uh, signing session, there's just like piles of jumpers everywhere. Apologies to anyone who got a hold of one of those. <laughs> Probably not some of my best work I've put together. <laughs> um, we're in there and kind of all these security guards started rolling in. I was like, what's going on here? Are they raiding the joint or what's happening? ScoMo rolls in and we yeah, all right. got a photo with ScoMo. I've never seen the photo though. I've actually never seen I'm sure... He was there though. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, we, sure? didn't, we didn't get ScoMo, no. Nah. <laughs> any, 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 you got Brandon I mean, Flowers? You, meet, do you hang out with Brand, the, from the Killers? The, oh, no, nah, he didn't come in or anything either. No, I didn't even know that was happening with Raywalt. No one did. He just 
planned so, that himself. So I'm going to ask that. So Jack's just rolled up and he's gone up and seen with the killers, has he? I, I think it was pre-granny planned if we win. Um, <laughs> was that 17? Yeah, 17, yep. Pre-granny so planned. So he's putting that together pre. Pre, yeah. So you see where he's at. <laughs> pretty relaxed life down in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute underdogs, yeah. but he's just going to plan it anyway. Yeah, sorry guys, uh, just letting you know I'll be uh, up on stage singing with the Killers. Yeah, get this one done. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, Jack. Again, now I've finished up. I can say this: kicked ten goals on me one day, and um, not my most favourite player, only because of that moment. But he's yeah. a good bloke. I've oh, done that to me a few packy games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, let's get a say. Yeah. What's that like? It's like the yeah. Josh Kennedy for me, right? Yeah, yeah. Training him, kick ten every weekend on me. Yeah, no, it happens a bit. Good, um, good bloke to learn off. Yeah, great defender. bloke. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, you know, he can come across maybe on the footy field as an angry um, type of bloke, but he's he's a legend. Yeah, real caring. Um, footy trips are always good post granny. Back to your other question. Yeah, correct. Yeah, we, we had we've had one every year except for 2020, obviously. But so how do you do that at Richmond? How do you? Oh, this is in 17. This yes. is how good we were going. We booked footy trip prelim week. Prelim week, <laughs> and then bullshit. <laughs> swear to God, I swear to God, we booked a footy trip prelim week, um, and then we had like thirty three blokes, thirty blokes coming on footy trip, and we've had to call a travel agent. <laughs> You're gonna have to move thirty flights, thirty accommodation. Absolute disaster for her, but she she did it. Um, Where'd you go? Went to Hong Kong. Do you um, need to give her yeah. a shout out? Oh no, uh, yeah, hello world down in uh, South Melbourne there. Perfect. Janine, very good um, Janine. Janine. Yeah, yeah, she's Legend. a trooper. So she's doing our one this year too. So, but um, we went to Hong Kong. That year was yeah awesome. Are we expecting a business class upgrade for Brody for the <laughs> shout out there? Yeah, from exactly Janine. right. So what, you what date to, is it planned for this year? When? We're going to Thailand again. We went to Thailand in um eighteen nineteen post grand going, final. Yeah, yeah. It's book, well, maybe we should book it for prelim. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now nah, post granny, we've got it booked for. Yeah. Oh, I've heard I've heard rumors across the AFL that that Richmond um, fundraise probably the best uh, for the footy trip. You boys put a you know a fair bit of effort into it. Is that around the the connection piece and being yeah. together as a group. Yeah, Sean Grigg handed over footy tripping and, and fundraising to myself. Wow. Um, yeah, back when you retired. So tell I'll, us about it. What yeah, goes into it? it's good. We do comedy a day, so we um, go down to the comics lounge and get about five comedians, and um, we sell tickets um, to entry tickets, um, bring some auction items, do a massive big raffle, and um, this year we got Rancy back to do a bit of a um, Q and A in that. And oh, I thought you were going to say a bit of comedy. <laughs> yeah, well, he should do. It was, it was comedy. He's um, yeah. For anyone that knows, Rancy's a loose unit. <laughs> Um, so it was a great day it was awesome so we raised money we give part proceeds to charity and then yeah the players take the rest so what sort of auction items are we talking about you know jumping into the into the locker and pulling out some yeah we had dirty um, boots we had some real good auction prizes this year that um went okay and then we had a pair of dustin martin match worn boots that just went outrageous so um that was that was pretty wild yeah um but we had some good auction items yeah who runs the auction not one of the boys uh, yeah, yeah, Rancy runs it. Yeah, Does yeah. So he's well, taking yeah. bids up no, front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just up on stage, yeah, doing the auction. Um, yeah, he's just mad. So he did, he did the raffle, the auction, and two Q and A's. Is he coming on the footy trip? Nah. <laughs> Do you have any past players going on, or just the- Nah. We we um we have a chaperone, which um we had the first year we had a Van marriage um a past player yes. um, it's safe to say Ivan Marich um, joined in on the uh, <laughs> he, was, he was a useless chaperone <laughs> if anything went wrong he was going to help no one so I think the club the following year gave him the tap on the shoulder and said you're not coming and no past players going um, so we've got our boxing coach who comes now yes. yeah so he comes along and he stays pretty level headed which is good what about the footy club you've always got your meals sorted you've got breakfast and lunch and dinner being provided for you pretty much yeah we, we poached um, Geelong's dietitian this year and she's good. a guru so um, we do a sausage sizzle on Mondays after games. Um, we've got a buffet there, and as of this week, we've started breakfast buffet. So seven bucks. So good. Yeah, go hash upstairs. Browns or so? Yeah, everything: bacon, eggs, hash brown, tomatoes. What have, we, what have we been eating here for? We should have been headed down to Rich. <laughs> We're getting looked after real well. Seven there. bucks. Seven Bloody bucks. Yeah. So if anyone's listening, want to uh, jump down to the Richmond Footy Club in the morning? <laughs> seven buck buffets. Pay hey, pass. Come on down. <laughs> I, to be honest, though, I, I feel like charging players seven bucks for breakfast is a bit steep. Like, why wouldn't you just put it, Chuck on? it on for us? The club's the biggest club in the country. Yeah, that's a fair, fair point. Yeah, well, before this dietitian, it was, um, I don't know how we kept weight on. She was slim pickings, the odd apple and that laying around. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely made a big boost. Uh, no, that's the thing though. Like, I mean, we, like sometimes we'd have lunches done, similar thing, you pay 15, 20 bucks. I mean, it is 45 people. You know, there's not many workplaces that just put food on for the employees, is there? No, but... Do you get that at the ABC? They put a nice slather of buffet breakfast down yeah, there for you? That's all the uh, taxpayer dollars. What, 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 what did you ever receive food-wise from the ABC? 
Um, maybe a mint if I ask someone nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Floating around. Um, what about Brendan Gale and Peggy O'Neill? Like it, it, it's you know touted you know, widely, you know how much of an impact they've had. But what about as a player? Have they, have they, they impacted the footy club? Yeah, big time. Years? Yeah, I don't know about other clubs, but people will probably see those two roles as excluded from the playing group. You know, yeah. don't don't mingle, don't interact as much, but they interact just as much as anyone. Brennan Gale's still a player at heart. He can't help himself but come down all the time. <laughs> does he ever, um, get the, ever get the ruck pad on and get him out of training? <laughs> Barmy does some. Well, Barmy has a Neil few Barm. words. He's still floating around. <laughs> <laughs> put, the, he's, put the specky bag on, Barmy. Oh, get he's, he's mad, Barmy. But um, yeah, Peggy comes in. It's her last year, unfortunately, because she can only serve so many years, but she's an absolute legend. Yeah. Yeah, she's a ripper. Um, what about Backman? A couple more questions here. Backman. You're a Backman. Um, we actually... Uh, Charlie, can you um, just flick the, a couple of those... T- I know your ankle's broken there, mate. But if you can grab them while I have a chat to Broadie here. We got... I want to talk to you about Backman at your footy club. Who's the Who's the grumpy Backman? Who's the real Backman? Like, who, who are we talking about that... Okay, you say you don't get your matchups and you play a bit of a zone sort of thing, not like Sydney, but the Backman for me, and I reckon across most football clubs... They're very different to midfielders and forwards. Yeah, club within a club. Correct. Yeah. So tell me about the back line at Richmond. Who's the leader? Who's um, the grumpy ones? Who, who, who who's tells, blaming everyone else? Who blames the midfield? Nick Vossen's very grumpy with with umpires. Um, very grumpy, but not towards his players. And then we've got Grimesy who can um, get pretty fired up. But Rancy was the man. He was always he was always the general down there barking. Um, but it's, it's quietened down a little bit. It's pretty calm down there now. We've got Robbie Tarrant who's just like... Absolute legend, very humble, um, just goes about his business. But at the moment, we've got like 10 backs in the side. We've got Baker up forward now. We've we've yes. got uh, Short in the midfield. Yeah. Um, we've got someone else in the wing. Uh, Hugo Earl Smith's going a bit of wing. So, yes. it's yeah, it's good. The backs are going well. We've got 10, 10 in the starting 22. So That's why Richmond's <laughs> just started getting yeah, better. Yeah, we're getting, more back, we're getting more and more backs in the so, team. <clears throat> this is Backchat, right? This is our emblem, some new merch out. Backchatpodcast.com.au forward slash merch. So, this is one of our... You can talk it through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that one says it was the midfield's fault. Is that um, quoted by me? Uh, that's quoted by <laughs> yours truly, actually, Will Schofield. Because so, I've, uh, I've said that a few times. Great. So that can be yours. We've got a whole bunch of them over here. We've got the, uh, we've got the back chat, Backman's Club. These are unreal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very good. Then there's a few other colours, some other things. We've got, um, we got what's some jumpers th- for you. We've got jumpers yep. for you. So we're going to need you to distribute these to the Richmond boys. We've got... We've had a few. We've down at Hawthorne, down at Essendon. Just want the backs to have them. None, none of yeah. these fly by Chopper night change, forwards. Nah. None of these. Um, you know, Griffin Logan at Fremantle, for instance. He's been up. He's been kicking goals up. No, none of that. Nah. <laughs> backman. There's only. There's not many left. Backman. Backman. Correct. There's but myself, you know, Grimes. Correct. Floston and Tarrant, I reckon. Done. We've got yep. four. We've got yeah. four things for oh, us. And Rioli. Rioli's, he's loyal now. Uh, is he? Yeah, he's loyal as they come now. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> if I see, if, if we give Daniel Rioli something and I fucking see him in the midfield or forward, he is to send our shit back. Just post it back. He's actually kicked a goal every week at the moment, but yeah, that's from back. Yeah, that's coming. Promise. Yeah, promise. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to come for you. This changes. <laughs> that's very good, mate. Um, we're going to get to the last bit, which is social media. Not social. Scotial. Yeah, like it. See what we did there? Yeah, see what you did there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Some really high class <laughs> stuff going on here. So social, me- social media is where the guests are asked questions by the fans. You've heard enough from Dan and I. The fans send the questions in. I actually sent out a couple of um, messages to a couple of contacts I have. You got donuts. I actually got donuts. Yeah. I asked for dirt on you. How much you got, have you got hit lists out that anyone gives any dirt? I've got nothing back. Davo's probably too scared that I'll put the dirt back on him. <laughs> he would have one of them. There's plenty of Davis dirt yeah. rolling around. Um, he's actually been quite poor with that. So anyway, we'll get to the fans. Here we go. Mrs. Loza Carbone. Uh, would you come back west? And if you did, Eagles or Dockers? Um, <laughs> I'd only come back if Richmond told me my time was up um, and I could continue playing on over in the west. Um, and then which club? Oh, no, I'm not too fazed to it. Maybe West Coast. There you yeah, go. Yeah, right in the heart. Yes. Yeah, good. Freo's a bit too far down for my liking. Yeah, correct. Right. You're a country boy. You country, North yourself, country, yeah. Describe yourself as a country boy. Oh, Dongra. Yeah, yeah Dongra, okay, yeah. Good. We like that. Or, um, or Wuben. I mean, he's ticking a lot of boxes here. West Australian, Backman, country. Very good guest. Ryan underscore Greeny. Uh, having played in three grand finals, is it true backs win premierships? Yeah, 100%. Yep. Sammy, do you reckon you... Backs do a lot of things. Can you, there's, we got, we've got one specifically <laughs> for this. Backs do a lot of things, but is it true that backs win premierships? Yeah, yep. hands one? down. The red one there. 
over there, Sammy. So we got something here for you. This is this I think will be yours, Brody. I think you're gonna have to wear this one with pride. Got a nice jumper for you. Um, but this t-shirt again, backchatpodcast.com.au <laughs> forward slash merch. If you're a backman, call and right this, now. This is uh, appropriate to you. I just want you to read this into the mic, please, Brody. You read out what this says. Forward sell memberships, mid sign sponsorships, back win premierships. Hey, no, never no true word said. My oh, man. <laughs> never as a true you, word As you said. heard from Nathan Ball, <laughs> backs win premierships. Very good. Uh, backchatpodcast.com.au forward slash merch. That's right. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> Tim underscore KK. Uh, who did you support growing up? Uh, Bombers. Yeah, just handed down from the old man. Um, yeah, Bombers loved him. Favorite player? Yeah. Um, Johnson, the Johnson brothers both played there. I loved them. Elwin Jason Davey. Mark. Yeah, Mark. Elwin Davey. Elwin Davey. Yeah, used to love him. Gun. And then, yeah. And then James Herb, but that's just, you know, everyone's. Cliche. Yeah, cliche. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't like cliches. No, no cliches. Oscar 94. Uh, Sonny's on Grand Final Parade, yes or no? Sonny's on Grand Final Parade. <laughs> um, yeah, why not? Yeah. Right. Got to give um, uh, uh, what is it? Rixie's uh, Rixie's <laughs> Rix eyewear. I think Tommy Sheridan buddy <laughs> oh, <laughs> flings out about eighty pairs of sunnies come that that time of the year. Still so. actually waiting for my pair of Rixes if you are listening, Tommy. I think uh, we give you my address. I'll send it through to you. You can have a listen. Um, Paul four L's. Uh, do you reckon Scoey and the Eagles interrupted the Richmond flag dynasty? Uh, no, I was pretty wrapped, but they won it to be honest because um, we we definitely weren't winning it after getting belted by the pies. Um, so I'm glad it went west because we wouldn't have heard the end of it if it yeah, stuck around. As soon as the uh, next day, is it just business as usual? Is that how that yeah. works? If if Collingwood had a one, it's probably not the greatest. You know, no, having you another. Just, you want to get out of the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah you want to you want to get out. So we looked after time, you. Yeah, he did. Hundred percent, he did. Oh, yep. that's, that's a thank you thank yeah, you thank you for okay, those boys <laughs> Jordan Vasolo underscore um, this isn't a question mark. it's just a statement this guy is an automatic 15 plus touches I love this bloke <laughs> well, on the weekend <laughs> 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 sorry Jordan <laughs> uh, we'll finish off on this one I think same as 4-3-9 uh, top 3 best and worst golfers at the club Oof. well Ray Re- Waltz off one and a half is what uh, yeah how and many games of golf is he slotting in none yeah, it's sickening. Yeah, and then he just he has he so had a rule when the kids before the kids came play as much as you want. Once the kids comes, it's all over. So he hadn't played around in like seven months, and then comes out and shoots like five over. So it's just yeah. It so he's one me. of those blokes. It so Mark, Mark McCrae is that guy at West Coast. Yeah, just an annoying human being. Yeah, it's annoying. Pick yeah. up a club, do that. Bang, Pick up yeah. a bat. I hadn't racket. played for two weeks. <laughs> Had a hit two days ago. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I did some shots you wouldn't even think of. So do you play? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm playing. Um, there's a there's a golf culture now which is building slowly. We've probably got maybe nine or ten. Um, the hub started that. Um, we yes. had a big oval there and just smacked golf balls around. Um, so there's some boys coming up. Baker's off six. Um, Graham's off ten. Um, okay, Richmond. Yeah. So what? there's some yeah some good golf culture going around. We should have a, like an AFL golf tournament. Yeah, I'd be all for it. 100%. It'd be unreal. Oh, I hate golf. I've got no temperament for it. No good. No, nah. there's a few blokes like that that, uh, yeah. You know the types. We, we played the other usually. day with, um, we got the first years, did like a first years camp. Um, and just midweek, I just went down south with them. And then um, the following day, played at Portsea Golf Club. So we had um, four groups, 16 players. And then as we're playing along, um, we get to like the halfway and there's like six bikes gone. They just got in the car and drove back to Melbourne. Had <laughs> <laughs> enough. Fuck this, they reckon. <laughs> I would have been driving one of yeah, those cars. Gone, yeah. It's a stupid fuck this. Yeah, they were gone after nine. Brody, thanks for your time, mate. No, um, no worries. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. No, uh, no, you're a busy man. Hopefully you make it four here at Richmond. Uh, you can leave this t- you can leave this scarf here though, mate. We're gonna set you up with some merch. Beautiful. Appreciate it all, all mate. Thank you very much. No, no, no worries. Thank you. You know where to find us, backchat, double underscore across socials, backchatpodcast.com.au forward slash merch for everything that you we're gonna be Richmond merch, I reckon. We get a this little gold logo when they win the fourth yes. flag and they're wearing the Backman merch and be like, How do we win this? It was the backchat merch. That's right. Yeah, okay, sorry. I'm getting carried away. Um, <laughs> thanks to our patrons, thanks to our uh, supporters and sponsors, Whipper Snapper. Uh, Blue Bet, Shelter, Margaret River Roasting Co. and Leadable Cameras. Uh, that's just about a wrap for Melbourne Backchat as well. It's been fun over here. Mm, very fun. Absolutely loved it. Thanks, Thanks Brody. Thanks, mate.